Uh, hi, uh, I'm Denshi, Alex, whatever. Uh, I do a lot of Linux and computer stuff, if you know about that on YouTube. If you don't, that's fine. So today I'm going to be talking about something called XMPP. So you may have heard that acronym before, I may have not. I mean, this is the logo up here, so this is what it looks like. It's pretty. So if you like aesthetics, we're already getting started with that. But what I'm going to be talking about today is something which at first sounds a bit like a very developer focused, oh, like computer, people who write code kind of thing. But what I'm actually talking about is really important for day to day messaging, something which honestly I can see in the next few years getting really big and especially regarding privacy, which we'll talk about later in this presentation. This is really a game changer. And there's a bunch of other stuff I want to talk about with that too, but at its core, XMPP stands for Extensible Messaging Presence Protocol. So, I mean, really, what it really is for a developer is a way of sending messages with XML. How many of you are familiar with XML, have ever written anything in XML? HTML, that kind of stuff. So you're familiar with this kind of way of writing stuff. XMPP is a standard developed a long time ago in the 90s to write messages with XML. And this is what an XMPP message looks like. I'm not going to sit down and break this down because it's not super important for this presentation, but at its core, you understand that it's a protocol for sending messages with XML. Not extremely new, nothing groundbreaking and revolutionary. So why should I care? If it's just a way of doing this, if it's just sending messages for developers, why should a developer care about something like this? It's a standard a bunch of people set up in the 90s to send messages. Well, here's some examples of companies which use XMPP right now. Um, so WhatsApp, uh, not really popular in North America, but it's got 2 billion users worldwide. You know, only a quarter of the world population running on XMPP. Kick Messenger, another really big one. Uh, Zoom uses it for its text messaging features, Jitsi, and video games as well. If you've ever had to make a video game with an online text messaging feature, it probably used XMPP. You had to implement it with XMPP because of, of how resource light it is. And we'll talk about that as well. They're also fantastic, these little like XMPP servers, for notifications and sending little small snippets. So if you remember back when I talked about it before, um, XMPP has presence in it as well. So you can share pretty much any kind of information on it. Um, and so these companies use it to share notifications. So if you have an Android phone or an Apple phone, or you're doing Firebase analytics or a Nintendo Switch, they actually forward the notifications to those as an XMPP message, as an XML message like this. So that's fantastic, right? But this talk is not for developers. I'm not going to sit here and explain how to write your own chat app today. We're not going to be talking about creating programs from scratch today. So why should I care then if we're not talking about that? Well, let's start by talking about the modern atmosphere of how chat works. So we, we were looking at this earlier, right? And we have WhatsApp and we have Kick. How many here have actually ever used WhatsApp or Kick? Like, are you guys familiar with Kick at least? No, okay, well, it's a bit of a more obscure messenger. I wouldn't recommend going on it. Like there's, there's some bad stuff on, on don't, don't go to Kick. But isn't it weird that if I sign up to WhatsApp, right? I can't message anybody on Kick, even though we just talked about how they both use messages with XMPP. Like if I was a developer at Facebook working on WhatsApp, the messages that my program is designed to send are in the same format as Kick, yet users from Kick can't message users from WhatsApp, even though theoretically that would be possible. They're separate servers with separate companies owning them, and their, their users are kept separate. So keep that in mind as we talk about it, because the next thing I want to talk about is email. So how many of you here actually actively send email? And I don't mean like to your professors or school, I mean like, you send it to your friends, your girlfriend, or stuff like that. Anybody here do that? No. Okay, so you're probably using like Instagram, Snapchat. What kind of messengers do you guys use for like everyday people, family, stuff like that, right? Telegram. Telegram. Okay, Telegram's one of them. So if you're using a messenger like Telegram or you're using Snapchat, you probably have a username that looks like this. You have like at Alex, at Billy, at whatever, right? And we really don't stop to think about this, but this is how usernames are taught to us in a modern like landscape. We're always expected to understand that at Alex is a username. But if we think about email, which I'm sure we all have experience with, even though we maybe don't message people daily with it, email addresses don't look like that. Email addresses have the at after, and they have a domain after it. So let's think about why this is. I mean, we have this system. Why can't we just have the same for email? And the reason for that is because email is a system 
where you have separate servers owned by separate companies. And we were talking about it earlier with WhatsApp. Why can't we message from WhatsApp to Kick, even though they're separate servers and separate companies? This is the missing link. So SMTP is the protocol in email that allows you to send emails from one server to another. It's the send mail protocol, basically. And we don't really stop to think about this in day-to-day -day life because it's an exception, weirdly enough, despite it you know, being the internet, that if you sign up for yahoo.com and somebody else signs up for Gmail, you can send an email from Yahoo to Gmail or Gmail. I mean, think about that. We're all running separate email servers. Embry-Riddle has its email servers. Um, Google has its email servers. Yahoo has its email servers. And they're run by completely separate companies with completely different software stacks and stuff like that. But you can send an email from Yahoo to Gmail despite being different companies. In fact, you can run your own email server if you want to and still send emails between users. So why is that? Well, this is something in the XMPP world, this is called S2S or server to server, two as in the number. And this is something which modern messaging servers purposefully disable. So WhatsApp, Kik, all those messages from before purposefully disable that feature so they can keep users in a locked environment so they can't communicate with each other. XMPP though, actually supports that standard. So this is how email does it. They have something called RFC, these standards uh, that basically a bunch of documents. You can go online and read them. And in fact, if you read them, you can implement your own email server. If you want to do that for some reason, you can write your own server and stuff like that by reading these documents, which explain this is what an email is. This is how we forward them. They basically explain how the system works, how we're able to do. This. Now, this stuff was in use far before Google and Yahoo and these companies ever thought to capitalize on it. So they were forced to admit the standard to basically adopt this. And so that's why nowadays, even though Google would love to lock you into their service, they can't because they know people expect to be able to email each other. So an email address looks like this because you need a domain at the end, right? You need denshi.org and it tells you what server that person belongs to. One server can have many different users, even if servers, you know, different servers have users with the same name, they have different domains. And you know what's really curious about this is that XMPP works the exact same way. XMPP addresses look the exact same as email addresses because it's the same underlying philosophy of separate servers, but one unified chat system. So isn't it weird that we learn how email works at school, but not messaging? I mean, we, have any of you been in computer science classes in high school where they sat you down and showed you that little diagram of SMTP and like users on email, there's like pop and IMAP and stuff like that. But we're never taught how messaging works. We're never actually sat down and told, hey, this is how, I don't know, AOL IM works. Well, because nobody knows how messaging works. Or really, more specifically, nobody agrees on how messaging should work. There's a bunch of different standards, a bunch of different companies do it, and everybody just decides, oh, I'm gonna make my perfect messaging standard and, and it never, you know, tags on. So. Here we can have decentralization solve everything by having XMPP as a standard system that different servers use and then intercommunicate. Now I mentioned earlier that Google would love to lock you into its chat system. They actually used to have an XMPP server. They used to have something called Google Talk. And on Google Talk, you could actually message people on other XMPP servers. Back then it was known as Jabber. Then Google purposefully closed it down to stop people from doing that. So just to give you an idea of how much they want control over chat. So here's an example of how XMPP works. Here's Juliet at the Capulet server, and here's Romeo at the MonTV server. And basically, there's a bunch of different clients signed up to one server like you would on an email. And Juliet, as you can see, the XMPP username is the same as an email. But instead of sending emails, she's sending messages to Romeo. And the messages go to the server. But instead of going to a different client on the server, like it would be on WhatsApp, where everybody would have to sign up to WhatsApp to message each other, the server can forward the message to Romeo and it can get to it. So with this fantastic innovation, now we can talk without our parents knowing. Thanks, XMPP. So basically, you can pass messages through servers through this thing called S2S. And that's what makes XMPP so amazing. It's like email, but for messaging. So like I mentioned before, with email, there's RFCs. XMPP is the same thing. You have these documents which say, OK, great. This is how we lay out the XMPP standard. This is how you have to send the messages. We talked about the XML earlier. This explains how that XML actually has to look. So let's backtrack again. 
how do you use your email? So out of everybody in this room, can y'all name at least like three different email programs you use? So you might be using Thunderbird, Apple Mail, the Gmail web client. What sort of stuff do you use? Anybody got any interesting email program that you use? Outlook. Outlook? Outlook's another one. So you can install Outlook. But if you go to Outlook, does it come with an account? You have to sign into an account, right? And what sort of accounts can you sign into on Outlook? Microsoft. I think you signed Google accounts. Too. Yeah, you can also sign in with a Gmail account. You can sign in with any email account because Outlook is an email client. So you have different apps for email, but you have the same account. So I have that account. That's my email. And I can use Apple Mail on it. I can use K9, Claws Mail, Thunderbird, whatever. And you can connect and see your inbox, see your emails, send emails. It's great, we're used, to this, we're used to this idea of separate clients for the same email inbox. So the same thing happens in XMPP. There's a bunch of different clients, and this is not like specific servers, but these are server software which you can install or other people are already running for you. So for example, Google used to run their own XMPP server. I'm not sure what they use. WhatsApp, I believe, uses a variation of eJabber. Uh, Fortnite definitely uses this, and a few other like game, gaming, like programs use this one. This is very corporate and adopted in those spaces. Prosody is another popular one, OpenFire and Tygase. Um, but the clients are just different programs like Thunderbird, like whatever, where you can have the same account, but use it on different programs. So Gajim over here, this one's for Linux and Windows computers. Uh, Dino's for Linux, this one's for iOS, Monal conversations for Android. So all these different clients, but you can access the same account like you can with email. So that's great. But why should I care? Like, okay, there's this great ecosystem. We can send messages to each other. You can sign up to this messaging service and Romeo can send messages to Juliet without our parents knowing, that's great. Why should I care? So let's start with the first big reason why XMPP is important in the modern day. That's privacy. So we mentioned WhatsApp before. WhatsApp, if you ever used it before, every time you start a message, it has a claim that, oh, hey, all your messages are end-to-end -end encrypted. The problem with that is not verifiable. We can't actually sit down and you know, ask Facebook for our keys or to generate them ourselves or to change them. You can't do that. Telegram has a bunch of privacy problems as well. The server code is not open source. We have no idea how it works. Signal has a few problems, although it's generally better than most of them. But the problem with all these, regardless of how open they are, is that you can never really know what they're running on their server because you're not them. Like they could just, okay, one day, they don't like you and they could just target you out and say, okay, we're gonna collect, not that that would happen normally, but that's a possibility because it's not a decentralized system. It's a single company, WhatsApp, Signal, whatever, running the messaging service. And if they decide to do something or change it or they change the way it works or then they change the terms and conditions, you can't do anything about it. And privacy is part of that. So let's go back to that Romeo and Juliet example by talking about something called a memo. So this is the fish from a memo. If you don't remember anything in this talk, just remember how pretty this fish looks. So, oh no, <laughs> Lord Capulet has been looking at all Juliet's messages on the server because Juliet has not been encrypted them. So he's the administrator of the server. He owns Capulet.com and he can go and look through all of Juliet's messages and all the messages she's been sending to Romeo because she's been saving them on the server. So by using Omemo encryption, let's exchange Omemo keys. Trust me, girls say that to me all the time. It's great. Like, Let's exchange your memo keys. Like you just know, you just know, right? But they exchange their keys and then, thanks, O memo. All these keys is garbled nonsense. It's been encrypted, basically. So, O memo, I'm not going to get too much into it, but most XMPB clients, they could go on it, and it's like there's a button that says O memo, just enable it, and your messages are encrypted and it's secure, and like we're good. And the great thing about this is that unlike the encryption on Telegram or WhatsApp or whatever, you can audit the programs, you know the programs are generating keys, you can read your keys, you can have your keys, like you own your keys, it's your encryption, and every device you add will generate new keys, so you don't have a single key, a single point of failure. Omemo is like really great, like this is just, this is fantastic. So that's great. Another great thing that we can do, so as you can see, not even the server owner can see your messages, metadata. So how many of you are familiar with the NSA quote, we kill people based off metadata. Have any of you heard of that? Yeah, yeah, we kill people based off metadata. It's true, it's true. XMPP has a much better track record with metadata compared to the alternatives like Matrix. Have you guys ever heard of Matrix? Or yeah, you've heard of Matrix. I've used it. You've used Matrix. Ma Matrix is a metadata disaster. 
I was gonna talk about it more, but due to recent events, I don't really wanna, there's a bunch of sensitivities in it because they're tightly linked to like Israeli intelligence. I don't wanna talk about that because, you know, we know what's going on. But Matrix is a lot of problems with metadata. It used to have a lot more problems they're fixing it up, but XMPP is a lot better with metadata. So basically this means stuff like the date your messages are sent at, where they're stored. With XMPP, you're sending messages. Like you send a message, that's what's sent over the network. And if you delete the messages on the server, they're gone. And servers can be set up in such a way that they delete messages after a certain amount of days. And so you can keep your messages secure by just not storing them or storing them yourself and having the server delete them. Matrix is not like that because Matrix actually stores a database here of servers and synchronizes it across clients and synchronizes it across, across servers. And it's just awful. Like it's basically spreading your metadata everywhere. Like it's like it's nothing. So the other big thing is that it's very lightweight. So we mentioned matrix before. Here's what running a matrix server looks like. A bunch of Python processes used enough. You can't see it because at the top, but this is like a lot of RAM, a lot of, this is what it looks like on my server running matrix. And then, uh oh, this is XMPP. Little, little guy, little, little small resource usage. So we can see how this isn't just great because it uses less resources. Let's, let's like think this through. If this is what XMPP looks like when it's running on a server, that means more people are gonna use it on the server, which means the network grows more decentralized. You're more incentivized to run your own. So that's great, but we can go deeper. There's more, there's more to this. This is Movim. So when I say deeper, I mean XMPP has a lot of other features. We mentioned messaging, but if you can send messages, what's stopping me from sending other things? Like apart from the obvious images, videos, whatever. What about articles and publications, stuff like that? So this is something called Movim. Movim is an XMPP client which supports something called publish subscribe. It's a standard in XMPP, which it's like RSS where you can have a feed but the feed, instead of just people like actively listening to the feed and refreshing their readers every 30 minutes or so, when an article comes out on XMPP, it gets sent directly. So if you ever, you know, if God willing, you ever go work at Google, Google does this with something called Google Cloud Messaging, where they use publish subscribe protocols to send messages to devices and stuff like that, like you have an Android phone, it's using that to send messages to it. But if you can send messages to stuff, you can also send articles, and so Movem is a client to do that. I'll show you that at the end of the presentation because it's really interesting. Uh, and now an exercise. So you really thought you just got away with like sitting here and not doing anything. I actually have something for you to do. So I want every single, every single person in here, if you have a device, and I encourage you not to get your laptop out like that, just get your phone, any device you can think of, and go to xmpp.org forward slash software, and for whatever device you have, download whatever the client which you think is the nicest is. So if you go to that page, you'll notice there's this on it, all this information, and you can go down and scroll down, and there's a bunch of software which you can look for. You can sort by which platform you want. So here I'm on Linux, but if you go to like Windows, for example, uh, and then go down, you can see there's a bunch of Windows programs. If you go to like, iOS, these are the iOS programs, there's three, but you can look through those and basically I want every one of you to install one of those, maybe set up like an account on something and just try sending each other a message, share your address and try sending each other a message. See how, maybe try enabling the OMEMO encryption before, something like that, just see how it works to get an idea for how functional this system is. And if anybody wants to try here, I have my address on my phone and my phone supports voice and video calling on it. So if anybody wants to try calling my phone from their XMPP account, which they're making, I'm hoping you're making it now, then we can do that because I do actually wanna make sure that it's working. And it's one of the features which people think XMPP doesn't have, but it does have calling. Uh, no, because you can just, there's a lot of servers that are open to public registration. So there's a bunch of servers which you can just go and ask for an account and it'll like on the client, it should recommend a few. Yeah, so you pick a domain from a set of existing ones. There's many out there. You can go to a website where you can actually find all the ones that are open for registration. But really the ones on a client are normally fine. They normally include like some really basic servers, which a lot of people use that are open for, for public registration. So just use one of those and you're fine. Oh yeah, yeah, like I said, XMPP is like, going back to that thing I said about the email. Um, 
all of these are different apps, right? But they all work the same email system, right? So even though, and the same account too, if you have that account, you can put it on your Windows laptop, on your Linux computer, anything, because it's like email where it's a standard system. Even though you have different software for different platforms, you can still connect the same account to it and more importantly, talk to the same people cross server. So even though you're on iOS, even though you're on whatever, like it'll still work. See, this used to be terrible like a month ago. That's what I mean when I say like this stuff is evolving. Like a month ago, Monal didn't even have calls. Like you couldn't even call people on that iOS app. But now it has calls and they're evolving the clients. And we're getting to the point where this messaging system will probably like get better than, it's already faster than Matrix, but it'll get like feature parity. I just realized I got a bunch of like XMPP messages I haven't read. I should probably read these later. All right. Oh yeah, yeah. So I'm like, they're, they're, okay, okay, hey baby, can we exchange old memo keys? Yeah, I keep getting spam with that. Oh, there we go. Oh wait, no, this is no. Oh, there we are. Nine thousand. Uh, wait, let's get. Uh, I never thought I'd be adding somebody with this username as a friend, but let's go. Nine thousand at conversations that I am. You guys ruined this presentation. Try calling Alex at Dentistry because the phone calling is always much better. Most of them is broken. Uh, let me add you as a, oh, here we go. I'm That's getting your call. It worked. Hello? 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 Whoa. Whoa. There you go, so it works. I had my phone silenced, that's why you didn't hear it ring, but. That's XMPP um, usage. So as you can see, it's just a normal messenger as you would expect. I wanna show you one more thing. So back to the presentation. Um, which is, let's read some Movim. <laughs> so Movim, as I mentioned before, is basically this. Movim lets you read articles through something called publish subscribe. So if you go to the community servers page here in Movem, uh, this is the one that I was, well, at least one of the ones I was subscribed to, and you see there's a bunch of ones over here, and here's mine. Mine's super popular because it's on the front page. But these, these publish subscribe ones, as you can see, you can give them custom names, and mine is named Denshi's Propaganda Pub Sub Node because that's what it is. But these subdomains, so mine's, my server is denshi.org, my publish subscribe node is pubsub.denshi.org. So your services on XMPP are hosted on these subdomains. So if you have like an image upload service, it would be like upload.denshi.org. Don't look at like the inappropriate ones. I've been trying to cover, the, these are, this is French, okay? So it's their fault. They're the ones these adding this one, stuff. These are just ones that exist. These are oh yeah, ones. this okay, is the so list. Not no, 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 this is not, this is my subscription. <laughs> No, <laughs> but you can go through and like read. These are ones which people have historically subscribed to. So I don't know, news.movem.eu has a bunch of publications from different like um, oh. different news articles. So you can like read Ars Technica on it if you want to. And these are published directly through the PubSub node. So when an article like this comes out, in the same way that you would get forwarded a message and it immediately gets to you because you got your client on, this does a similar thing for articles. So this is why Google, for example, doesn't use RSS internally, they use PubSub. And the reason for it is because it's instantaneous. So for all their like sending data around and like notifications and cloud stuff, they use publish subscribe. So yeah, you can explore different Bob Menendez. You can read about the US Senate or Voiture Electrique. Uh, man, my French has got, my French has fallen off. Yeah, their most popular one is news and as you can see it's just a bunch of like things and you can actually what's great about publish subscribe is that as an xmpp user you can actually create your own node on this and start publishing articles directly from your text client but that's a bit too far out for this kind of talk i don't want to get too into it so thank you for listening does anybody have any questions about this anybody have any further inquiries like anything else you want to know about xmpp i've been using it for like two years like I'm pretty I'd say sort of experienced in it I think it's a pretty good chat system if you were using matrix before matrix is horrific when it comes to resource usage internet usage like it uses so much bandwidth it copies over entire chat it's not a chat protocol it's a chat history synchronizing protocol which is why it's so slow on older devices it's just awful so XMPP is really good but yeah, does anybody have any questions or anything like that they want to ask anything like any further clarifications, anything like that? No. Well, all right. Well, I've been Denchi. I hope you enjoyed this presentation about XMPP. Um, <laughs> it was fun having a uh, 9000 call me. You've just like, I can't upload this to my channel anymore because of this. This is horrific. But thank you so much, everyone, for listening. I've been Denchi. Goodbye.